Well, hello, quilty friends, and welcome back to my sewing room. Today is Friday, October 21st, 2022. And today I'm going to be making tall triangle trees using my tall triangle ruler. This is my ruler right here. And I'm going to be making two sizes. This is the small size, and these will finish after we sew them and trim them up at four and a half by, well, we'll trim them up to four and a half by six and a half, and then they'll finish four by six in the quilt. Okay, so there's three small ones. And then I've got three large ones here. And after we trim them up to eight and a half by 12 and a half, they will finish eight by 12 in the quilt. And because of those measurements, let me move this design board so I can show you what I'm talking about. I designed it this way so that two trees, when you sew them together, will fit either on the top or the bottom of the large tree. So two small to two top. All right. And I wanted to, so I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you how I cut out a large tree and a small tree in the background, the trunks and everything and give you those measurements. And then I'm gonna show you um, how to sew those trees. And then I'll show you a few different variations at the end. But um, I'm really excited about my tall triangle ruler and these trees because it's fall. So I'm using my B plaids um, collection. And because it makes a really cute fall quilt, there is a plaid pines sew along for this quilt that finishes at 72 by 80. And the sew along starts on Monday, November 7th. And so I'll do a little bit of something on my blog, you know, just showing you that it started and things like that. But different quilt shops are just kind of cutting kits for the plaid pines and, you know, you just need the kit and the pattern. And so you could Google that to find the different quilt shops that are doing that. And they're kind of doing that on their own, but I will, this is the tutorial that shows you how to make the large and the small tree. So that goes along with the sew along. And then um, I'll let you know on my blog as well on Monday, November 7th, that it's started and you know, give a link to here, back to here and things like that for any more additional information. But I really, really love using the plaid pines for this tree quilt because it's just so fall. You know, it, it actually could move on into Christmas if I wanted it to, but you could use more Christmas prints for that. But you know, as we know, a pine tree quilt always lends for Christmas or fall or just summertime camping. So what I'm gonna show you how to cut is from stackers. So you can use 10 inch stackers for the large trees. If you're doing a quilt with just the small trees, you can use the five inch stacker. Of course, you can use any collection. Again, I'm just using B plaids today. But because of the shape of the ruler that you can see here, you can cut one large tree. Here, I've got some, here's my stacker, <laughs> stackers that I have going that I've been working with. So here's a 10 inch square here. You can cut one large tree and then from the leftovers right here, by turning this around, you can cut two small trees. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So the first thing that I do, I usually use my smaller cutting mats for this so that I can turn it around if I need to. But the first thing that I, I'm going to do is I just need a straight side of a ruler. So you could use a regular ruler like this if you wanted to. This is what I usually use for my 10 inch stackers, but you could just use the straight side of this. But I like to cut off the little tiny, little zigzags or pinking edges. And then this is a good way to kind of square up your plaid a little bit. And so I'll just take that and make that a little bit square that way and just cut those off. Okay. And oh, I went by the wrong line. Might as well lay this down. Do it a little bit deeper. There we go. Okay. 
Okay, I'm going to push this up a little bit farther. I want to make sure you can see, see what I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do for the tall tree is, I'm going to wait till this is cut down. Is you just lay it on the straight edge right here at the bottom, or you could lay it on the straight edge at the top too. It doesn't matter, but I kind of like to, you know, center it a little bit. There is plenty of room this way, so I don't have to worry too much, but I do try to lay it in the center. And then I always have one finger off one side of the ruler just to stop from slipping. And then I go ahead and cut off one side, cut off that top, and then just turn the ruler over, which is usually why I have a small mat. And then same thing, have my little finger off of the ruler and there you have it. That's the exact size of the ruler right here. Okay, which is nine and three quarter inches tall. So that works from a 10 inch square perfectly. So I'll set that aside and then out of these right here, I'm going to go ahead and bring this mat back in because I like to just line them up right here. I'm not worrying about this angle side here or anything. I'm again just going to cut off. I want to do it with the right sides out because I want to see that I'm getting it straight. Again, here's my chance to get all of the prints straight. what I mean by that. And then if you wanted to cut two at the same time, you can just put these back like that. But after I've got this straight right here at the bottom, I think it's easiest for me to just go ahead and cut four and three quarters tall, because that's what it's gonna end up being with the ruler. So again, for this small one, this is four and three quarters tall from here to here. And then it makes it easy just to lay this ruler right here. And the line that you're seeing, see how you've got plenty of room to go back and forth if you want to. The line that you're seeing it on is right here. This it looks like four and a half on the ruler. I don't know if you can see that or if there's a glare, but it's four and a half there. But because there's a quarter inch up here, that's why it measures four and three quarter. I just wanna make sure you understand what line that is on. And then I go like that. And then instead of moving the fabric, I like to just move my mat, put it back, the ruler back into place. And on the bottom here, you don't have to worry so much about accuracy. It's just this little point here because we end up trimming this off anyway. But see how you can get two, two small and one large. So that's how you do just the trees, okay? And now we're gonna need backgrounds. So let's see, let's pull this in. I've got backgrounds in the four different star colors here. Already cut for the large. So I think I'm gonna show you how to do, I think I'm gonna use the red for this one. So I'll show you that. <clears throat> This is, you need to cut two layers at a time. This is how it's going to look. See, for the size of your tree, that's how they're gonna look. And I'm gonna show you how to cut them. So what you're gonna do is start out with a nine and three quarters inches tall and six and a half inches wide. All right, hang on, let me grab some water. 
Okay, sorry about that. I usually bring my water over with me and I forgot. Okay, so you need two nine and three quarters tall by six and a half inches wide. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at this line right here. Okay, and you're gonna line that up with the bottom and on the right sides of that. And then your tip's gonna be right there. You're not gonna cut that off. You're just gonna make one, one cut like that. Okay, so this is, this is for one block background. But then you can turn it around here. It, you can't really do it, I don't know, it's just much easier to do it two at a time. And then you just turn it around and you just have this little bit in between that gives you a little bit of leeway if you need it, okay? And you can see that at the very tip there, it kind of slipped over a little bit because I didn't have my hand up here. It doesn't matter. That's the same angle and that'll work just fine. So I've got my background for that. And then for the tree trunk, I need, let me find my little board that has my tree trunks. Hang on. Here they are. Okay, so for the large tree, you need to cut two inches by four and a half inches tall, and then you need two four and a half inch squares to go on each side, and you're just gonna sew them together. Okay, so that's the background. I've got everything I need for one large tree right there, okay? And then for the small, I'll probably just, let's see, I have some other smalls cut, just so I'm not sewing the same color. We'll do a red one, and we'll pull this in, and pull in maybe the denim stars that are small. And for the background for that, to cut these right here, you need two, four, and three quarter inch squares. For the trunk, you need a one inch by three inch, and then you need two three inch squares to go on each side of the trunk. Okay, so that's for the small tree. Let's just set that there, set that there, and I'll show you how to cut the background. So you're just gonna do the same thing. Make sure these are lined up. They need to be either wrong sides together or both right sides together, just so that you have those opposite for each side of the tree. And you're gonna do the exact same thing by lining up the tip here and this line right here. Now, if you were left-handed, so I'm right-handed, so I'm gonna go like this, but if you were left-handed and you're going to cut with your left hand, you would follow this line right here, okay? And line it up and cut that way. And the same for the large. So all I need to do is line up the bottom <coughs> on this four and a half inch dashed line right here. It's the, the dashed line under the four on the ruler. And then just do the same thing for another block. Whoops. Make sure that tip is lined up there. Again, don't cut this side off because you can see why you don't want to cut those sides off with the ruler because that these are not the tree shapes, these are the background shapes and you need that. So this is basically what it's gonna look like. We're gonna sew the sides together there and that side together there, same for the large one. And <clears throat> then after they're sewn, then we'll come back here and I'll square them up. So let's go over to the machine and I'll sew a large and a small. All right, now it's time to sew. We're gonna be sewing with Miss Betty today, named after Betty White. And we're gonna be doing the small, all laid out on the design board. And then I've got the large laid out on the design board. Okay, so let's just start with the small first. They're sewn the exact same way. 
I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised on how easy it is to sew these. So I usually start with the trees here. And what your goal is, is to sew this to this tree, right? But I, when you fold it over, I would like you to fold it so that you can see a little red triangle there at the bottom. And that has a little white triangle there at the top. It's almost covering that top there. So by doing that, when you fold it back because of the angle, you're just gonna use a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'll show you why, what that looks like when we fold it back, when we press it back. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and <clears throat> run this through the trunk. Again, quarter inch seam allowance. We won't be using the center line right here. Hang on. I've got a dry throat for some reason today. Okay, so I'm gonna snip those off. Bring this over here. Just set those stitches by pressing. And then just gently, because this is on the bias, I kind of like to open it up first and go you know, with the iron this way. All right, and put a clapper on there so that that will absorb the heat and help it to, when it cools off, it will be flat. And see, this is what this looks like at that point. Let me hold it against my hand. Okay, you can see that little triangle there. But that is straight across with that point but then when you're gonna bring the other side, you're gonna do the exact same thing. You're gonna bring that triangle up a little bit, just as high as the other one. So that will kind of help you judge how tall you need it. Let me turn it around this way. See how tall you'll need it, the same height. And then just line it up with that. Now you can pin if you want. I'm just not a pinner, but you can you know, feel free to pin if you are. And then I just go ahead and again, quarter inch, just making sure these edges are lined up, not stretching it out, just letting it lie flat. Now this is another reason that I love, you know, my Seam So Easy guide because I designed it so that it stuck out farther from your machine if your machine doesn't have to be, happen to be set flat in a table. It gives you a larger surface for measuring and for helping to keep your blocks flat. Okay, so with the trunk, I'm gonna go ahead and press towards the trunk. <coughs> I'm always setting my seams, putting a clapper on. I normally keep that on a little bit longer, but you know, just because we're stitching now, I wanna, I wanna show you. Lost my pedal there for a second. Okay, <clears throat> then I'm just gonna add this to the other side. Now you wanna be as accurate as you can with these, but because we're trimming these up after, it's, it you know, has quite a bit of leeway, so you don't have to worry about it too much. So that's what that looks like. Wide part at the bottom, wide part at the bottom for the tree and wide part at the top for the background. Okay, so I'm just pressing towards the background on both of them, setting a clapper or two down, letting that cool. Then I'm gonna come over here and put a piece of scrap fabric through. And then just press this again towards the trunk. And I'll put that on there to cool and flatten. And now at this point, you can see you've got your little tips up here and I'm gonna slide this over so I've got a little bit of workspace here. So what I like to do is grab my uh, rotary and a ruler over here. Let me just grab both of these and pull them over here for when I need them. 
And what I'm just going to trim that flat across the top and fix any differences. Like, see, this one's a little bit lower and that one's a little bit higher. So as long as I have quarter inch from here to here, that can be fixed. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is lay this ruler. I can use my trim it rulers if I want, but on my rulers, I've got this little dots along here. That's the quarter inch. So I can just lay those dots right on that point, line it up with the sides. <clears throat> pull it down just a little bit so it's on the point. And then you don't even have to do this at this point. You could do this at the point that you're squaring up after you sew the trunk on. But I just thought I'd show you how I do that. So again, if you're going to sew your trunk on, we know that this is already squared up, okay? Because we just did it. <clears throat> so I put this on a straight line here. And I come down here and I know the ruler needs to come up a little bit because I don't know, Cass, can you, can you see that little gap under there? So I'm going to pull this up by an eighth of an inch. I have plenty of leeway for the tree so I can trim a little bit off this bottom. That's not going to be, you know, don't be afraid to do that. Now you can see I'm going to just trim off this unevenness right here. And doesn't matter if now it's a little bit shorter than four and three quarters. I designed this block so that the trunk is tall. And <clears throat> so you can do the same thing with the trunk. If they get a little bit crooked, let me get my wider, my longer ruler, I mean. And I'm gonna go by the straightness of the trunk here and just trim just one edge, just one straight edge that's gonna go on the bottom of that tree. <clears throat> and then I push my machine back over here. That's one reason why I like to put a mat under here. A lot of people ask me, do you just put it under there for the cuteness factor? I like to sew, to, um, sew and cut at the same time sometimes, so I wanna be able to slide my machine. And I can do that with a mat. So what I'm gonna do, you can see this is obviously wider. I'm doing that, so there's leeway, and that's why I have you cut it. You can measure this if you want, eyeball it, and pin it, but I am just trying to put this trunk right in the center of this tree. Plus, um, you know, it's almost the same amount of fabric on both sides, depending on how you trimmed. And then I'm just gonna run it through. And all I'm worried about is the trunk aligned with this because all of this outside after we press it open is going to be uh, trimmed off. So, but I'm still always trying to keep a line that's square so that I know that I have that to, to judge against. Does that make sense? So that's what that looks like at that point. And I like to press it up here towards the tree. So I just set my stitches right here and then I'm opening that with my finger just making sure that it's open all the way. And I put a clapper or two. I like to put one right on the seam. And sometimes, and I don't even know if this makes a difference, but sometimes I'll put an extra one on top just for weight. And so that's why I always have, here's my long ones that I have, have over here, but I like to keep a lot of these stacked too deep on my short ones so that I can use as many as I need to. Okay, so that's what that looks like. And so we'll go on to the large one. So I'll switch places with that. And I'll stick that up there. Move my lamp out of the way. So we can kind of see what we've got going up there. Same thing. This is the same, even though this is a large tree, this is the same size tip at the top. And you're just gonna do the exact same thing. <clears throat> Line that up, sticking up a little bit so you can just kind of see a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to really be exact. The higher this goes, the more seam, uh, background seam allowance you're gonna have at the top, if that helps. And then I usually just start sewing that and then I just make sure it's lined up on the edges. Again, right on this quarter inch seam. 
and you just want to use you know as accurate as a quarter inch seam as you can but remember we're just going to trim it up after so. and then i'll run the trunk pieces through so you know they're sewn exactly the same way but it's just larger pieces obviously with the larger tree and again, this really helps to have a flatter surface because you don't want to stretch them out. Whoops, use my big scissors for that. I'll grab my little scissors in a second. And because, I know I keep repeating this, but because it is on the bias, and especially with these longer pieces, it would be easy to stretch them out. So I just like to maybe start in the center here. and kind of pre-open, if that makes sense. And I'm just pressing away. And notice when I'm using the iron in this motion, I'm lifting up and then going like this. If I'm going back and forth, I'm gonna have a pleat. So that's where I use that. And I'm gonna see if I've got my little, what have I got here? I've got some yellow scissors. Those are easier to snip with than, than a great big scissor, right? I don't know why I don't have my stork scissors in the drawer now. Probably because I've had them in my crochet or something. Okay, so again, towards the trunk on that. And you can use all different colors of trunks. I just chose to cut a bunch the other day when I was preparing for this um, out of the same print. But, you know, you don't have to do that. Again, you're the boss of your own quilt. And <clears throat> I really love it when you guys change things up. And I love it when you do it exactly like I do too. I'm honored and humbled when you do that. But um, I like to see change ups too. Because I always change my things up so to match my things. So you know, why wouldn't you? I'm not offended in any way when you do that. Okay, so again, I just did that top corner exactly the same. And I know y'all, some of you'll be thinking, why don't you pin, that's crazy. But it, it doesn't matter because I'm only worried about from what's to here to here anyway. This way I feel like I have more control. That's just, I don't know, that's why I've always done it that way. And that works for me. It might not work for you. You might need to pin. Okay. I'm going to move these because now I keep wanting to use my big scissors. I could have just rubbed my trunk piece through, but I wanted to bring this over again because I'm going to press towards the background. I have that right side up. Set my seams. So my four and a half inch um, square backgrounds to the side of the two inch by four and a half inch tall trunk. Let's see, where's my other little scraps? I usually have like three or four of them piled here. Sometimes they get lost back here. <laughs> I usually work with two at a time. And then I can do the same thing with this. I can trim this bottom up if I want to. It's not too bad. Let's see, let me put it up here so you can kind of see it more. You can see <clears throat> that there's a little bit longer here. So I'm just going to trim the whole thing like a sixteenth of an inch off or whatever's even with that. 
right there. I'm just gonna put it onto the side of the fabric right here. Make sure it's straight on that side. And I've got that trimmed off. I'm not gonna worry about the top this time. I'll do that when we, when we uh, trim it up. Okay, this one. It looks pretty good, so I'll probably just go ahead and sew it, but I just want to lay it on here just to show you that. Yeah, that's fine. So the straightest edge is what you want to put here, and again, you want to just center it up, and you can pin it if you want. You can, um, like, measure from here, but because we also have a little bit of leeway when we're actually trimming it off from side to side, then, you know, I don't worry about it a whole lot. I eyeballed this. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's a tree if it's off a little bit. That's just more realistic, right? sure the seams are going this way. I can feel that. <clears throat> That's another reason I don't pin is because I like to feel my seams and how they're going and I don't want to stick myself. I want to just make sure they're going the right direction as they go under the foot. Okay, got that. Setting the seams. I'm just going to make sure my seams are going the right directions. Set that over there so I can have a little bit more space. I love these little old irons so that you can really get in there. Okay, now I'm just going to set that on there for just a minute. And that's all there is to sewing them. And so I'll stick it back on the design board, turn off my machine, and then we're gonna take both of these blocks back over to the table and I'm gonna show you how I trim them up. Okay, so here we've got the small block and you may be asking why do it this way and then trim it up. You know, there's, there's measurements that I could give that it would have to be exact, but when you're working on an angle, it's so much easier to make things a little bit larger and then, you know, just trim them up at the end. And it just makes making the block and the quilt or runner pillows, whatever you're doing, so much more enjoyable. And so I hope that answers any of the questions that you might have about that. So what I'm going to do is it's going to be, I'm going to cut it four and a half inches wide and six and a half inches tall. And what I love to use are my trim it rulers because of the lines that they have everywhere. I can make sure everything is centered. So for this block, I'm gonna be using the four and a half trim it ruler for the sides and the six and a half inch trim it ruler for the top and bottom. And so for how tall it is. So I like to do that first, the height first. I know that this is already square because I trimmed this up. So I'm not gonna worry about that. Remember when I trimmed that up by the sewing machine so I don't have those little points up there. So all I have to do with this is lay this, I'll put it right side up so you can, well, sideways you can kind of see, but see that center line, how you can go right from the point of that tree right there and have this straight along with this fabric. And you have this center line to go right down the middle of the trunk. And then I know I just need to cut that up. And see how you have that much leeway. I have you cut these just a little bit longer than needed again so that you can trim those off how you need it. So now I know that that is six and a half inches tall and that's how I need it. So now here comes the four and a half and it's got the center lines on it just as well. And so I put that in the center of the trunk and you can also, you know, because this is a block, it can get dis distorted if I'm pushing on it too hard or whatever. So you can kind of see from here how much you have on each side. Okay. 
And then again, I always like to have my, at least my pinky finger on the other side. And then I just trim up to that point. And I know this top right here is straight. So I can just line that up like that. Sorry if I pushed that out of the way, I needed it closer so I could make sure. And then I just continue on, turn my mat around. The last thing I have now to do is just this straight line here. And then I just move this down, making sure this is all lined up. So that's how you can trim up rectangle blocks, rectangular shaped blocks using my square trim it rulers. I have my trim it rulers in sizes from two and a half clear up to, I don't know, 20 and a half, 24 and a half. I don't know if I have 24 yet. I can't even remember, but that's okay because we don't need that for this block. <laughs> so there you go. One cute little tree right there. And I just think those are adorable. And it'd be fun you know, just to use this for a mug rug, put some patchwork over here, like a six inch um, <clears throat> log cabin block would be really cute or any kind of a block next to it. So that's, that's a fun idea for that. And let's bring in this larger one. And I think I'm going to just use this mat and move it. I hope that you can see that. <clears throat> and so the two size rulers that I use for the larger one are my eight and a half trim it ruler because of course it's going to be eight and a half inches wide and then I use my 12 and a half inch inch ruler and these are just for trimming notice that this quarter inch on the outside is for your seam allowance and what your block will look like after trimming it up using this is inside the window so I don't use these to like you know cut out my pieces for quilting or anything like that I use my you know my other rulers that have the inches like this with the half inch on the sides and so I hope I've answered that a lot of people have asked me why you know why is it so confusing to cut out fabric with the trimmer rulers well because that's not what they're for they're for trimming so <clears throat> all right so here again I like to do that piece first by cutting off that little triangle Hope I'm not leaning into the camera too much there. Okay. And then I know I just have a straight edge going across there. And that ended up cutting a little bit there and not so much there. Okay, and I've got that quarter inch right there, right to that point. And now I can just flip it around this way. And line it up here you don't really have to center it at this point you're just going from the top to the bottom but you can I mean putting it on the center line you can certainly but I had, either, I had already done that so I didn't need to worry about it so now I know it's 12 and a half tall and then here comes my eight and a half inch ruler I'm just gonna put that in the center that way. Now this one is big enough that I can't put my pinky over there, but notice how I'm putting my arm there. I always just do that. Now, um, you can put like little sticky dots on your rulers and stuff like that if you don't want them to slip, but I do all of this blue in here. Everything that's a flower and this is non-slip. And so that really helps it. Okay, so we do one side. And then because one side is finished, all I have to do is just put this square from this side to this side right here. Trim it up that way. I'm always checking both sides just to make sure. And see, I always do this before I start to cut. I just make sure that that's all lined up. And those are my little leftovers. So it's not really that much leftover, but it's so much nicer to just make it a little bit bigger and trim it off. You know, I don't do that with every block. I just do that with ones that have certain angles. And so there we go. We have eight and a half. And 
by 12 and a half. And so that's how you make the trees. Now, let me move this stuff out of the way and then I'm gonna chat with you about, obviously we've got these two sizes and I've told you how, you know, to match up like this. Let me grab this one in. You know, any of them you can. So these two together, this becomes eight and a half inches wide so that you can just sew it on the bottom or the top. And I think that's really fun. But as you can see, I have many lines on this ruler. So you don't have to just uh, use that. Let me, let me grab this in so you can see the lines better. I just put all these lines on here, every inch, and then every half inch is dashed, and then a quarter inches are these short ones in between because you never know what projects are coming down you know, down the road that you want to use and these lines for. And so that's why I have them. And I put this line here for left-handers, right, this line here for right-handers. And so you can make any size tree, really. You could make them, you know, using this. So it would be kind of a medium tree instead of small or large or this line. You just kind of have to play around with however tall you cut this tree. Remember, if you use this line, it's really going to be six and a quarter because this is a quarter inch up here. So you want to cut your background squares tall enough to be six and a quarter, however tall of tree that you're cutting out or triangle. Okay, you just want to make sure that your background's that same height as you're cutting the center out. All right, so that's enough about the ruler. I know in the video of um, casted a slideshow, some photos that I took of different variations on the tree and different ideas. So I'm gonna pull those in and show you what I'm talking about. So obviously I've shown you just, you can use the same fabric for trees. Okay, that's your option. And that's how it is in this quilt right here for the sew along in plaid pines. But you can also use a different fabric collection, which I have going here. When I was testing out my ruler, my flea market fabric was out. And so I made these, and I made these using my B backgrounds, because I think this will be a really, would really be a cute little runner. So see these colors, just makes it look different. <clears throat> so th these are both my B backgrounds and all three of them that you see here. And I used my B cross stitch for the trunk. And all these are flea market. And these are really soft colors. And sometimes I like to use these soft colors for Christmas because I love pink Christmas trees because my grandma always had a pink Christmas tree. <laughs> and she had a huge pink chrysanthemum too every year and she just decorated with a lot of pink and teal for Christmas and yes she used traditional colors too but she always had pink and teal and I just I loved it and so I just think of my grandma a lot so I, I think this would be a really fun pillow table runner and so I've got those and then of course you know I love scrappy right so I thought that I, it would be so easy to just use it. Grab a 10 inch square, <coughs> and from a 10 inch square, you can cut two three and a half inch strips and one two inch strip. And that's what I did, and I just thought I'd play with those pieces and do some scrappy trees. So here's my small scrappy trees. And <clears throat> these are the two inch strips sewn together, and then I just cut them out. So this is a little bit wider, it just kind of ends up that way with the measurement. But this is like a half and half tree, right? And so for this, if you wanted to do a half and half tree, let's see, I wrote that down so I wouldn't forget to, but I believe it's two, you want to cut two strips and sew them together two and three quarters wide by four and three quarters tall for that. <clears throat> and then again, these are the three strips. And speaking of these three strips right here, because it was the width of the 10 inch stacker square that I 
So I was able to cut, turn my ruler like this. How did I do it? I must have did it this way. See how the fabric all lines up? I was able to get three trees out of it. I just haven't sewn these yet. But if you want to do stripes, you can get three of the small trees by cutting two inch by 10 inch strips and sewing three together. And then this one, I just did a four patch, knowing of three and a half inch squares, you know, like this. Oh, sorry about the garage door. Okay, so what I did with that was just did a four patch and then just cut out the tree. And of course, these are all sewn the exact same way that I showed you how to sew, just doing the patchwork first. And so that's the patchwork versions of the small trees. I just think those are so fun. <clears throat> and if you're doing the plaid pines quilt, it would be fun to maybe just pop one in. Okay, so there's the half and half of the large tree. And what you wanna cut those are, let's see, you wanna cut these four and a half inches wide and nine and three quarters tall, two of them right here to do the half and half and then just sew them together. So there's that one. This one is the stripe. So I did one, two, three, four, five, six, two inch strips together. And that's how that came out. I think that's really fun. And then I've got this that I did actually a, um, I did, I sewed six, three and a half inch squares together. And then I just sewed one square at the top one three and a half inch square, and I was able to cut that out that way. It was a little teeny bit shorter than the ruler, but that's okay. The trunk is just a little bit longer in this one, you know, to make up for that shortness. So that's that's the patchwork there, and of course there's many different variations you can do. Um, I should have pulled in like an applique piece, but look, you could put one of my So Simple Shapes a heart there, you could put a star there, you could put an applique star on the top, there's lots of things you can do just to add a little bit of applique, um, you know, with my So Simple Shapes. Now this one I wanted to show you because look how fun. I wanted this one to have snow on my tree, right? So let's pull out this other red block that I did. And all you do is, you know, you just cut it out with obviously the white fabric and you just switch your background, a dark background for light. But look how fun you could do every other one and do green and white, red and white, whatever you wanted to do that way. And of course you can do that with the smalls, but you can do your entire quilt like this in a dark, like a midnight blue background would be really fun. And then I would just use a lighter brown for the trunk, something that's gonna contrast with that background color. And then all your trees could just be backgrounds so that they, it looks like they're it snowed in the, you know, in the dark sky behind it, in this dark winter sky. So that's some options there. And um, I just kind of played with 10 inch squares. And, and like I said, I cut two three and a half inch strips and then cut those into three and a half inch squares and then left the two inch long strips so that I could make let's see, let me pull that back in so that I could make those striped trees. And that was really fun. I, you know, I always like to, to play with scraps and I love scrappy quilts, but for those of you who don't like scrappy quilts, this, these trees would lend to just using the same fabric over and over again and just by yardage instead of using a stacker and do whatever you want with these trees. I hope you have fun with the ruler. And of course I'll be having more projects down the road with this. But in this video, I just wanted to show you the simplest, easiest way to just make the large tree and the small tree with cutting and sewing together and then trimming up. So thanks so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. And if you like what I'm showing you here, please like my video, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me you know, with my content. And I appreciate all of you who are subscribers and followers and have um, supported my work throughout the years. I really appreciate you and think of you often. And I can't wait till I'm back here with you in my sewing room. I'll chat with you later.